Hey, what's up guys, Metal571 here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Bang & Olufsen H6 second generation. And, let's get started. So, what is this headphone? This is intended to be a premium luxury over-ear portable. Uh, it's got 40 millimeter dynamic drivers, no exotic materials here as far as I know, and a nice removable cable. Well, maybe not so nice, but... Uh, it's nice that it's removable and it's also cool that you can put it on either ear cup has an opening here so you can uh, insert it. So I think the build quality here is really great uh, and it I would hope so since the MSRP is about $299 for this guy. Uh, kind of up there. It's definitely pay a bit of a price for the name and the, uh, and the look. And uh, <laughs> that definitely shows, however. Um, but uh, despite that, I think that the headband here, even though the uh, ear pads are very comfortable, they're plush, you can see they're, they're memory foam, and uh, they're very easily removable. All you gotta do is twist it and it comes right off. And uh, I'd love how the R is here and the L is right in here. Please, more manufacturers, do that, do that. I love that their L and R are right inside the ear cup. Um, like I said, comfort's really good. Uh, despite the ear cups being a bit small um, size-wise, this opening, but I think it fits fine, at least for me. Uh, it's a little, it's deceptively comfortable. It doesn't look like it's uh, going to fit too great. And in my experience, it's fine. My ear doesn't really touch and the inside doesn't really bother me. Um, but as I was about to say earlier, the headband is fabric, and I feel like that should, probably should have been leather uh, at this price point because it's so uh, it's such a premium looking headphone. And the ear cup, the ear pads are already leather, but the, this is fabric. Now I've had some people complain actually about some headphones um, using leather up here, and how that was actually less comfortable than this being fabric. And uh, well. If you're one of those people, this is obviously going to fit you better. But I think it detracts a little bit from the luxury aspect of the headphone not having leather there. This, I believe, is all is leather on this side though. So there's this like stitched uh, top part here, which is nice. And there's metal here, and the metal cups, and the this this cold to the touch, you know, premium, really cool looking finished uh, outer area here. So really nice build quality there. I also love how you can adjust this smoothly. These two uh, arms move smoothly in and out. There's no clicks. In a way, that's nice because you get infinite adjustability, but at the same time, um, there's no clicks to be like, I'm set at six on both sides or four on both sides. I know I'm not the only person who does that, uh, probably. <laughs> so you lose that ability, but you do get infinite adjustment. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't come with a case though. Uh, it does come with a quarter inch adapter, but it does not come with a case, which I was a little surprised to see considering the MSRP, pretty expensive to not have a case included in the box, but you'll have to get one separately if you buy this guy. And the cable, the cable is, here comes the Zeos part, it sucks. Seriously, it, it has so much memory. Um, they didn't even gold plate the ends. I mean, that's a little tiny detail, but really? And then the, the this this uh, volume adjuster, wow, you guys can't see that, plus, plus and minus, and the middle button here is iOS only, and there isn't even an Android uh, version of this. I'm sure you can buy a third-party cable that has that. But I just chucked that eventually because I couldn't take it anymore and bought a cable off of Amazon that was braided. I think internally braided and uh, gold plated, much nicer stereo since I don't need the uh, inline controls, but it does support the inline controls, obviously. And uh, these are like 15 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. I'll link this one in the description, just the one I bought, but there's lots of them. But I totally recommend replacing that because the original cable is just, it's not, it's not great. Again, kind of a letdown for the price there. Um, as you saw, just another note that the ear cups swivel, I think they swivel in a strange direction in that you wear the headphone like this on your head, L this side, R this side for me, but then you swivel only, it only goes towards you. So if you're gonna put them down, you kind of have to like turn them around and swivel, put them down. And this is probably because 
Bang & Olufsen wants to you to show off their logo like this around your neck or something when you take them off your head and they're portable. That's my only guess. But anyway, just another small detail that uh, I want to cover there. Now let's talk about the sound, the part that uh, most people really care about here. <laughs> or I'm subscribed to this channel. Bass as usual first. This is a bassy headphone. This is totally, wow, this thing is so smooth. This. The bass on this is totally boosted by quite a bit. This is definitely a bass heads delight kind of a headphone. In my notes, I say it has about plus 5 dB. I had tile measure this exact pair, actually, so maybe I'm cheating a little bit there. But this is, this is I hear it the same way, and if I don't hear it the same way the measurements say, which I, does happen and is going to happen in this review, spoilers, uh, I will tell you. So anyway, the bass is boosted by about 5 dB uh, relative to the 1 kilohertz energy below 150 hertz. It's very, it's quite bassy, um, but strangely, there's also a large 5 dB dip relative to 1K at 250 hertz. So you're losing a lot of the, the low bass notes of uh, male vocals, even female vocals. It sounds kind of thin. Uh, the body of the mid-range in the, in the upper bass region, depending on how you define that frequency, but I've given you the frequency about 250 hertz. Now, you can fix this with EQ, thankfully, but without it, it does sound a bit bizarre in that the bass abruptly kind of dies in the upper registers of the bass, and then suddenly you've got mid-range, which I'm going to get to in a second. The other problem with the bass here is that the harmonic distortion is quite high, and actually that is audible if you crank this thing. It doesn't take well to boosting the bass further or turning the volume up a lot. And uh, what I mean by that is when you really start cranking it, you kind of get to the point where the bass doesn't get louder. It just gets more and more bleed and mud, uh, just, just overwhelms it more and more. And so not a very good high volume headphone. I feel like they pushed the driver a bit hard um, from the first generation, which didn't have this kind of bass boost. Not as much, actually quite a bit less. It was a very different headphone, the second generation here in terms of the bass. And the, the, the driver sounds like it's being pushed too hard. It kind of reminds me of what happened to the K7XX, for those who have heard it. Um, this might anger some owners, but it has really sloppy bass, at least the one I heard. And it sounds like the driver was trying to do too much bass and then just got into harmonic distortion land real easy. And so that seems like what they've done with the driver here. It's only a 40 millimeter driver, not some big 50, 53 millimeter. So that could also have something to do with it along with the way they've tuned it, but just be aware, that's what happens with the bass here. But if you're not listening at a really high volume or above moderate volume, it probably won't affect you. At least it doesn't affect me. And of course, I'm gonna get into my use case a little bit later there. But it's still lots of fun, and you have sufficient definition at moderate volume as long as you don't crank it. And uh, as I said earlier, the strong bass never bleeds into the mid-range because of that dip. <laughs> uh, so getting into the mid-range, the, the interesting thing about the, the mids here are also a bit bizarre in that they're kind of boosted in the 400 to 1K region, 400 hertz to 1 kilohertz. So you get kind of this honking sound. Uh, the mids are forward in the mid-mids and, and through the low mids. Um, but the upper bass at 250 hertz has this big dip. So it's a really abrupt transition from the bass to the mids. Uh, I wouldn't say the timbre is quite great. And in addition to the, the forwardness and the honkiness of the mids, the upper mid range is recessed by about, I don't know, in my opinion, about 2 dB. Some people will say, uh, I don't know, 10. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe 7506 owners will, will absolutely hate the mid range on this headphone. <laughs> I can tell you that much already. Um, but what I did is I boosted uh, 3K or 3.5K, something like that, by about 2 dB, which helps to fix the upper mids and uh, bring, bring guitars forward, because man, even electric guitars distorted on this thing were really quite background sounding smooth but too just just too far pushed back so i pulled that forward in addition to fixing that low mid-range problem so as this is definitely not a headphone that i recommend as much uh, without eq 
but I'll get to that in a little bit here with the uh, after we get to the conclusion part. Now the treble here, weirdly, this does not sound anything like it measures. I don't know why there's so much 10 kilohertz energy on Tile's measurement of this headphone, this very one actually, but it doesn't sound like that. There's no sibilance here. Um, I, I think the timbre of the treble sounds fantastic. It sounds very extended. Um, there's no huge 10k peak. It might be slightly forward there in the mid treble, but um, despite the measurement, there's no large bare peak of death in this thing, <laughs> even though you'd think that uh, looking at the graph. And I also wrote here, lots of air, clean, never gets too bright. No complaints. I think the treble is awesome. Probably the highlight here uh, compared to the weird weird harmonically distorting bass at high volumes and bizarre honking mid-range. Uh, the treble is notably less flawed sounding to me. Uh, soundstage, alright, it's not great. I mean, this is a really well-sealing headphone. Um, and so, it's not an M50X, <laughs> but... It's not as wide as some closebacks I've heard, and especially at 299, I think that it's not wide enough for the price. Uh, more about the price again coming in a bit at the end. Uh, but instrument separation is actually quite good. I thought imaging was nice. It's just that the stage was kind of small. Uh, but for a closeback, the imaging was was uh, much better than average. But it should still be better given the price. At least I think so. Uh, isolation is awesome. This is my office headphone of choice quite a bit uh, because of the isolation factor here is so good. Um, it's it's isolates, it's gotta be among the lowest um, leakage headphones I've ever tested. You put this thing on, everything around you sort of dies. Um, I haven't heard isolation that comes close to this since like the 280. Uh, it's really, really good uh, for listening in an office. You can turn it up a decent amount, and I don't think anybody's going to hear it as long as there's some kind of white noise in the office going on. It's great. It's on the level of monitoring headphones. So really good isolation makes it great for the office. Uh, genre pairing. I, now, now here's where this gets interesting. So I want to make this very clear. This is not an audiophile headphone. And that's a weird thing to say on this channel for something that I actually like. Uh, but if you listen to classical a lot or jazz or really, really well mastered stuff, you're gonna hate this because the timbre is so weird. And like I said, there's a huge dip in the upper bass that you're gonna hate it. And even with EQ, you can't completely fix the way this thing kind of sounds. So if you're an audiophile and you're listening to, I would say, not modern <laughs> genres and not modern uh, mastering, skip it. But for me, I listen to all kinds of junk mastered music <laughs> like metal and EDM and all the time at work and this is awesome for that <laughs> so it's a strange category to describe this headphone for but it's really shines i think with modern music and it makes sense i mean that's kind of the target market bang and Olsen, i think is is going for here they're not going for the hardcore um you know jazz musician they're going for the modern listener on the go uh, as far as amp needs go, this thing's very low impedance. I think it's 32 ohms, but uh, you guys can always look it up on the website pretty easily. Very easy to drive. You don't need an amp here. Um, and in fact, anyway, cranking this thing too much, as I said earlier, will just make the bass distort too much regardless. Um, so as far as headphone comparisons go, I think the this guy's gunning for, say, the Vmoda M100 spot or you could even compare it to the K553 I'm wearing, but that's a lower priced headphone, this thing. And this is really a total like yin to the K553 yang. It's, it's way different. The K553 is much more honest, has a much better timbre, 
much less bass, much better uh, transitions throughout bass, mids, treble, without any EQ even, uh, which gets even better with EQ if you want to tune the 553 slightly. It doesn't need much, but the, the H6 is so much more fun to listen to, though. And that's the thing about it that I like. And with some EQ, you can fix its flaws to some degree that... Um, makes it enjoyable enough to me to make it the ultimate office headphone for modern listening. Uh, but the K553 still does have some other flaws as well, like the mids are a little grainier, and it seem, seems like the mids here, despite their weird tuning, are quite clean um, compared to the 553. But of course, 553 costs quite a bit less and uh, it should be more aggressive than this one. So it's much better for mixing and mastering. It's why I recommend the 553 so much uh, for you guys who are doing pro work, but this headphone is totally the opposite. Uh, and so in conclusion here, uh, again, against things like the M100, I think this is a really good contender against something like the M100, which is also a bass headphone headphone. I haven't reviewed it yet in detail, but from what I've demoed, this thing is definitely an interesting alternative if you're looking at the M100. And at street prices, uh, you can find this thing. I think it, it hovers quite a bit between two and 300, but I think if you can get it used uh, under 200, I'd say go for it. That's a pretty good deal uh, considering what it is. But again, it's flawed, but I like it. And that's a weird thing to say. Uh, people who have stuck around for a long time know that I absolutely cannot stand the Grado. By the way, that review of the SR80E, 100% still stand by that. I do not like Grados. And they also measure quite poorly, uh, but they don't measure in a way that makes them fun for me to listen to. Uh, or at least it are correctable with EQ to some degree where they have some technical proficiency enough for where they make it, they're, they're fun. It's kind of fun headphones and it's kind of like serious headphones. And this one's very much on the fun side of things. And I like it. And that doesn't mean you will like it. But hopefully my sound description was helpful in making you decide whether you want to take a shot at this guy or not. But uh, at the office, it's awesome. I, I love it at the office for uh, rocking out while writing that, writing that C++, guys. So that's the Bang & Olufsen H6 2nd Gen. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.